Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman. We do have uh, several special guests for us today, and uh, let's kick it off with uh, Josh Matthews, who has some uh, news and updates for us. Josh, how you doing? I'm good, Ross. How are you? I'm good. Always good to talk to you. The recording has started. What's, uh, what's the latest and greatest in the world of Josh Matthews? Well, before we get started with everything happening uh, with Impact, and there's an awful lot to get to here, um, on behalf of everyone, I just want to say that our thoughts and prayers um, are with those affected in Florida and the shooting that happened at Parkland High School. It was horrific, and our deepest condolences to the families of the 17 victims, and we wish a full and speedy recovery to those injured. Obviously, um, you know, Orlando and Florida has been uh, the home of Impact for years. We look forward to, to going there each and every time we are there. Um, so I'll, I'll begin by saying that, um, and uh, we have a show tonight that will obviously take place at 8, 7 Central on this Thursday night. A lot happening. The debut of Brian Cage, uh, EC3, will team with a mystery partner to take on Johnny Impact and Matt Seidel, and then we have a couple of championship matches. The X Division title will be on the line when Phantasma challenges Taiji Ishimori, and then a world championship rematch between Austin Aries and Eli Drake, not to mention Sammy Callahan will face Lashley for the first time ever. You guys will have the chance to talk to Sammy here in a little while. And then a knockouts match with Rosemary and Hanaya. That takes place tonight. And then tomorrow night, one night only, uh, on Global Wrestling Network, you'll see the premiere of Canadian Clash, the last match, impact match ever of James Storm. You guys can see that tomorrow on Global Wrestling Network. And then if you have noticed on impactwrestling.com, we have an events calendar that we have uh, implemented so you guys can keep up with all the places where we're going to be. Uh, March 3rd, we'll be at Border City Wrestling for a one night only in Canada. And then March 4th, we'll be with Destiny Wrestling for a Twitch event. March 23rd and 24th, we'll be in California with Big Time Wrestling. And then, of course, you have WrestleCon April 6th, 9 p.m. at the Sugar Mill. Uh, apparently there's a big show happening in new Orleans on that Sunday. So, um, we'll be there for the weekend. You guys can get tickets at wrestlecon.com. And then the news that broke moments ago, uh, on impactwrestling.com is that April 22nd, we return to traditional pay-per-view, uh, with redemption and redemption will take place in Orlando as will the TV tapings after that. So, uh, you guys are hearing that for the first time, April 22nd, next pay-per-view, redemption so that's um that's everything i have on on our calendar uh again impact tonight and then our next sort of uh you know event that we have planned is crossroads which will be on march the 8th um that'll be a you know one of the themed episodes of impact um a lot of great matches happening at crossroads and then we'll start to really ramp things up for redemption so obviously a lot happening um and a lot of information i just gave everyone um, if you guys have any questions before you guys get a chance to talk to, to Sammy, uh, I'll answer them now, Ross. All right. We will open up just for questions for Josh. We're going to have Josh here for about another five, seven minutes. So if you have questions, it'll be star six. Please identify yourself and your media outlet. One question only, please, for Josh. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Uh, this is Darren Simmons from ImpactAsylum.net. Uh, we're wanting to ask, looking at the um, live events uh, that are going to be showing on the Twitch channel and also mentioning the Kinect Collision that's on uh, the one night only that's going to be on Global Wrestling Network. I was hoping Josh could kind of talk about the what's the plans as far as the synergy between the Twitch channel and the Global Wrestling Network, both of them kind of being, of course, content-based um resources and kind of how it's sort of going to be determined which goes on Twitch, which goes on Global Wrestling Network, what's going to be sort of the designated advantages between the two platforms. Actually, hold on, Josh. I got to... All right, Josh, now, now you're good to go. With Twitch, you're going to get a, a monthly exclusive. So you're going to get to see 
you know, like we did the first one um, a couple of weeks ago, Scott Demore and I had an opportunity to call that one brace for impact that was done with Russell pro in New Jersey. Uh, the next one will be with destiny on March 4th. Um, those will be sort of your standalone events. You guys will get an opportunity to see some great matches you'll see athletes that you perhaps aren't super familiar with. Um, and then you'll get the fan interaction that comes with being on Twitch. Um, so that is a monthly exclusive that'll live there. Um, and then there will be exclusive programming that will be added to our Twitch content that will be added to that library. Um, so you can um, download Twitch, go to Twitch and, and see all that stuff. And we'll keep you guys as up to date as humanly possible at impactwrestling.com on when those events will take place. Um, when you can buy tickets, the partners that we're going to be working with for those different events. And then GWN, obviously, um, you know, you can stay current with all the latest episodes of Impact. And then One Night Only um, has moved from your traditional pay-per-view provider um, here in the States um, over to GWN. Same thing, I believe, um, where, you, where you guys might be in the U.K. And you can watch One Night Only on GWN now. So it, it, the synergy between Twitch and Global Wrestling Network is that we're able to talk about the other one on each platform. You know, we can tell you what's going to be happening on GWN on Twitch and vice versa. Um, and then down the road, we may see more things where, um, you know, Russell Khan on April 6th will be live on Twitch. And then I'm sure that there'll be some content that'll be taped and then, then aired on GWN. Hi, Josh. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com here. Um, what kind of reception have you all gotten for the Twitch service as opposed to the Global Wrestling Network, at least from a fan perspective? Josh, did you hear that question? Josh, are you still with us? Josh Matthews, where are you? Did you unmute me, Ross? No, you, you're, you're good to go. You can answer the question anytime you'd like. I started answering the question when the gentleman asked me the question, and then you said you couldn't hear me. Well, you're good to go. Everybody hears you. They, they hear you more than they care to. So, I mean, you all can just keep answer. hashing this out if you want. I'm cool with that. What was that? No. You all can just keep hashing this out if you want. I mean, I can use that instead. No, I'll answer the question. Sorry for Ross's incompetence, everyone. Um, reception from Twitch, I believe, from the fans, and, and, and as myself, even as a fan, I think it's great to be able to be in the room and to interact with everyone and to talk with everyone about what you're seeing and what's happening. And I, and I did that with a group of friends for Brace for Impact. Um, we were all in the, in the chat, and we were in there together, and, you know, there's stars from Impact, knockouts from Impact, that are all in that room interacting with everyone. And that, to me, is what... Um, the differences with Twitch, and I think that everyone uh, across the board, fan-wise, um, from what I've seen, also are agreeing with that, that interaction, that being in the same place anywhere around the world, watching the same show together. Hi, Josh. It's James from Wrestling Epicenter. I just wanted to ask you, how do you think Sanjay Dutt did as your color commentator? Yeah, I was going to get to that um, as well. Thank you for bringing it up. I thought that Sanjay did an incredible job being thrown into the fire. He, he, Sanjay's been in the wrestling business longer than I have, and he's never done color commentary before. And I think by seg two of that first show, it seemed like he had been doing it for a long time. Um, I thought Sanjay brought a different sort of energy, a different vibe, a different take. Um, obviously from a competitor standpoint, as a former X division champion, um, who's sidelined with an injury right now, someone who wrestles every weekend all around the world, someone who has his finger on the pulse of what's happening in the wrestling world. I think Sanjay did an awesome job and I look forward to seeing Sanjay grow in the role of a color commentator for years to come. Hi, Josh, this is Raj Giri with wrestling Inc. Um, I just had a question regarding uh, the pay-per-view. Um, 
there are rumors that the first pay-per-view was going to be lockdown. Is there a reason to switch from going from lockdown to redemption? And uh, how many pay-per-views do you think we can expect to see this year? That's a great question. I think after um, redemption, we'll probably, and this is just me speculating, but I guess we would probably see Slam and then and then Bound for Glory. Um, why it's not lockdown, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I think some of us were preparing for lockdown and Redemption is is new. It's different. It's uh, you know just a different kind of branding than you know, lockdown. Having all those matches in the cage, I think this opens it up to to be a little bit different. Um, so, and, and I've seen the the branding for Redemption. I think everything looks cool. It fits with the new uh, uh, graphics that we have for Impact, and I think it's a great way to get things going in April and sort of get ready for the summer. Hey guys, Ryan Bowman from thegorillaposition.com. Uh, Josh, when I talked to you over the summer, you talked about all the hats that you wear with the company. Um, you've taken on a whole lot of roles. I'm just curious now with the, the transition uh, and the move to Canada, have any of those changed? Have you expanded or have you been able to kind of trim down and sort of uh, give those responsibilities to others? No, I still do as much as I possibly can um, on a daily basis. It's just where I do them from. And in 2018, it's uh, it's great. The technology that we have is great to be able to do everything uh, from home and voiceover stuff I, I can do from our national studios. Um, as long as I have a phone and a laptop and an Internet connection, I can pretty much continue to do everything that I've uh, done here over the past uh, for I guess it's been four years now. Um, hope, you know, obviously the company needs to grow in more robust areas. And I think that we're sort of entering that era right now. Hey, uh, this is Vijay from Sportskeeda. My question is, uh, how important was Jeremy Borash to Impact Wrestling? And because he uh, did announce the first episode from the Orlando two things, at what point did you find out that he won't be continuing as the announcer? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I know it was about JB. I just don't know what the specific question was. Right. Uh, so my question is, uh, how important was uh, JD to the company over the long run? And he did announce the first episode uh, that he shot from the Impact Taping, but he was replaced on the second one with uh, Sanjay Dutt. So at what point did he find out that uh, he would no longer be continuing with Impact Wrestling? Gotcha. Okay, I'll go backwards. Um, I saw somewhere online that it was reported that we revoiced stuff that uh, JB and I had already done, which wasn't true. Um, our next VO session when we found out uh, that Jeremy was leaving the company was like two days later, so, no, maybe three or four days later, actually. And we had time to come up with a different game plan and come up with what the, the right decision was going to be. And there was a lot of different opinions and a lot of different um, thoughts. And I think that the final decision was the best one that they could have made. Um, Sanjay uh, came here and, and did great. And now we have uh, that situation in place. Uh, your first question was how important was Jeremy? Um, I, I mean, important, sure. Um, I, I think that <laughs> um, there are everything is moving as as um, as at the speed at which it was moving before Jeremy said he was leaving. I guess is the best way that I can put that. Um, there's no hitch. There was no glitch. There was there, everything's just smoothly running as it were, if he were still here or, or not here. All right. We're going to have one more question here for, for Josh, and then we'll uh, move on. Hey, Josh, Sean of uh, Fightful.com again. Oh, how have your duties changed since JB left? Sorry if you answered that. I got on the call a little bit late. But obviously uh, there's the commentary deal. But have you I, – I know you wear a lot of hats backstage as is, but did that accelerate at all with Borash leaving? No, it didn't. Um, at my The stuff that I do stays the same, stayed the same, doesn't change. Um, I wish him nothing but luck and success down there. Uh, it's a different beast. But um, as far as what I do – nothing was affected other than switching back from color commentary to play-by-play -play announcing, which is what I have been doing for 14 years. All righty, Josh, I appreciate it very much. Anything else you'd like to uh, add? 
Yeah, just two things. Um, I mentioned April 22nd, Redemption Orlando. Uh, be on the lookout for VIP packages. Um, Ross and I work uh, together on those and coming up with what we do as far as fan experience goes. We did the miniature golf at the last event, which I thought people really enjoyed. Uh, Ross says that they enjoyed that too. Uh, so you'll probably see more of that. Other interactive events that um, the fans can participate in with our roster those things will be coming up uh, sooner rather than later. And then just a quick programming note before I uh, turn things back over. Mm-hmm. Starting tomorrow night, um, if you're in the U.K., you'll see the premiere of Impact uh, not at 10 on 5 Spike. It'll be at 11 p.m. Uh, on 5 Spike going forward. So that's going to do it for everything I have. Again, uh, lots of things coming out. Um, get your tickets for WrestleCon. Uh, please uh, you know, let everyone know that we'll be there April 6, 9 p.m. at the Sugar Mill. Um, tickets are available right now at WrestleCon.com. Uh, and then we're back on pay-per-view April 22nd in Orlando. And um, Sammy Callahan's going to talk to you guys next. So how versus everything, Ross. Everything. Josh, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, pr- certainly a great segue uh, to our next two guests who uh, – they were with us uh, about a month ago, and by popular demand, everybody's asked for them to come back. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be peaceful. Uh, cannot always guarantee it with our two guests. We have uh, representing OVE, Sammy Callahan. Sammy, how's it going? How's it going? I'm sorry you made me cough. I'm good, Ross, uh, even though I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that does these anymore because you love hearing my voice so much. I do, and... Uh, Along with yourself, we also would like to welcome, uh, representing LAX, Conan. Yo, what's up? We in the cut and we easy like Sunday morning, even though it's Thursday morning. Boom. Gotcha. Uh, let me ask both of you two, and uh, Sammy, perhaps you can answer it first. How are things going for you? And reflect back on uh, Barbed Wire Massacre and where things are at for OVE. Things are going great. Even though we lost Barbed Wire Master, uh, I don't think any team really won or lost in that because uh, we all get a chance to show what we did. We set the world on fire exactly like we said we were going to do. And now we're on to bigger and better things after this. Uh, LAX is going on to do a feud with someone else. And uh, as you can see by this Thursday, uh, I may have bitten off more than I can swallow by attacking Bobby Lashley. But this Thursday, first time ever, one-on-one, the Death Machine versus Bobby Lashley. Let's see what's going to happen. Conan, what's, uh, what's the latest and greatest in the LAX world? Yeah, just incredible stuff. You know, the LAX family still intact. You know, Homicide, Diamante, and, of course, the tag team champions. Uh, we said we'd get our belts back, and we did. We did that uh, massacre, barbed wire massacre match where I think everybody went out there and literally put their bodies on the line, and, and it's gotten great reception, and that's what we're in the business for, to, you know, be noticed and to be the best, and right now we are the best. All righty. Well, guys, I, I appreciate it. We're going to open up at this point for media questions. Star six to get in the queue, and please uh, identify yourself, your media outlet, and please only one question at a time so we can uh, get as many questions for the two of them. And also please specify if it's a, if it's a more general question, whether it's for Sammy or Conan. Did the resident twink Josh Matthews leave? I believe he has left the uh, left the premises. Okay. I wanted to have a few words with him, but go ahead. Hi, Conan. This is Raj Geary with Wrestling Inc. How are you doing today? Yo, what's up, Raj? Um, I wanted to ask you about Rey Mysterio. He's kind of been all over the place, and I, I know there were talks uh, – about him possibly signing with Impact. Um, how is he doing right now, and, and where do you kind of anticipate him showing up or ending up? Yeah, I don't know. He, um, you know, he's had an incredible year. Uh, it was very important for him to leave WWE and, and uh, you know, do things on his, his own terms, and he has. And I know that, um, that uh, Impact has reached out to him, and uh, obviously WWE did. And that's obviously a decision that he's going to be making pretty soon. I hope to have him over here, obviously, um, because we have, you know, um, a great history together and, you know, ADRs here and that whole Latino movement. But um, at the end of the day, who's going to make him the best offer for him? Because the one thing I know 100% for sure, he will never go back on a full-time schedule. Uh, 
Uh, hey, uh, this is uh, a question for Sammy. Uh, this is Ricky from Sportskira. So, uh, your tips with Kojima became quite the viral sensation. Did you anticipate how much of a sensation it would be when the thing first happened? Uh, can you please uh, say your message again? You kind of broke up a little bit, and I didn't get all of it. Right. Uh, so your kiss with Kojima became a sensation all over the internet. So did you anticipate the kind of sensation it would become? Uh, transition what? To me coming to TNA? No, uh, the kiss with Kojima. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't quite... Can you, repeat, can you repeat the question once more? I, I think we're all having a little trouble hearing you on this. Right. Uh, uh, okay. So there was a case that featured Sammy uh, from New Japan, which became quite a viral sensation. So what I wanted to know his thoughts on the scene. You know, I think what he means is, you know that guy, um, you know how they have Kenny Omega and Ibushi, uh, Callahan as the Golden Lovers? Nothing. Uh, he wants to know if... Can you hear me or no? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, w what is the question? Because I don't understand it myself. I I'm not sure any of us have understood it. It was something about uh, some incident in New Japan, which I, I, I apologize. I did not... Is there something with... Did you wrestle Kojima Callahan? Is that, I keep hearing that name. Hello? S Sammy. Let's see where Sammy Hello? is at. Wow, Sammy got so hot he just get off the line. <laughs> Could I tell you what I thought he was saying, uh, Ross? Yeah, go ahead. You know that, do, are you aware that Kenny Omega... Hello, Hello? can you hear me? We can hear you now, Sammy. Okay, cool. Yeah, it kicked me off, and then I had to come in and say I was going to ask the question, and then it let me back in. Sammy, he kept saying something about Kojima. Did you wrestle him, or were you supposed to wrestle him or something like that? Uh, I wrestled Kojima while I was at New Japan. It was absolutely amazing. I, I love Kojima. He's one of my uh, favorite wrestlers and inspirations in wrestling, so to get a chance to lock up with him was absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think that's where he was going. All right. And I apologize if that was not exactly what your question uh, was, but I don't think any of the three of us truly understood uh, or could hear the question. So uh, I apologize on, on on that. I, for hey, some please. reason, you know, Sammy. Yes. You know how uh, Ibushi and Omega are the golden lovers? Yeah. I think he wanted to know if maybe you and uh, Crimson would be the red-headed lovers, but that uh, that might have been lost in translation. Fair enough. Not, nothing? All right. Nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ross, who's next? Uh, this is Darren Simmons from ImpactAsylum.net. This question is for Conan. Conan, you, you're the man with the top tag team in Impact, arguably, in the country with... AX, but you also you're involved with another tag team, which is one of the hottest free agent tag teams out there with the Lucha Brothers with the uh, Pentagon and Phoenix. Is there any possibility we might be seeing what I guess some would classify as a dream match anytime soon in Impact with um, Pentagon and Phoenix coming in and squaring off against LAX, kind of putting two of, two of your crews against each other? Yeah, that would be dope. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of problems because uh, AAA owns the intellectual property of Phoenix and Pentagon, so they've stopped them from working in certain places, including Impact. But I think now with the uh, um, symbiosis that there is, tremendous work for Latino between, you know, AAA and Impact, that maybe we can finally get that rectified. And I wouldn't mind seeing, because uh, I know Callahan is squared up with both of them over there in AAW and other places, I wouldn't mind seeing him in OVE against Homicide in LAX. That would be another great matchup. But definitely, I'm looking forward to it, and I am trying to work behind the scenes to make that happen. Yeah, and if I, if I can interject in here, Pentagon and Phoenix are guys that 
myself, Dave, and Jake have feuded all over the world. It's it's past the point of a rivalry right now. We tore masks off each other. We bled. We've went the most extreme you can go in professional wrestling with each other. But through that time, we've learned to respect each other, and we we became something we like to call L family. A little bit of Spanglish, but that's our group of guys. And any company that can secure Pentagon and Phoenix will benefit from it, no matter where they wrestle on the planet. We have a uh, internet question directed at uh, Conan, but it actually he, he wants a uh, a Sammy reply as well. Uh, Conan, are your in ring wrestling days done? Would you ever come back to wrestling? And uh, do you ever th- think about what uh, Sammy did to you with that fireball? As if you were in the ring, you'd want a one on one with Sammy. Yeah, the m- March eighth. I think it's March eighth. I'm going to get my uh, hip surgery. And uh, I'm going to go into intensive training with my boy, Ray Mysterio, which if you saw me, the... and I'm going to get in shape. And I do want to do a, um, a, um, like a farewell tour. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to do something with Sammy or anybody else that, you know, um, that captures my interest. Obviously, we have a score to settle. I don't know if I can get back into shape to have a one-on-one. But definitely a trios match could definitely be in the uh, in the future. I'm not going to lie. I'm not afraid to set you on fire. It might happen. Well, good. Bring it. I, I just hope that you know while you're out there, you know, attacking people from behind and taking the playbook out of LAX. Because remember, bro, I was taking him and shaking him in Miami while you were playing marbles and watching Sesame Street. We, You never know. We may get you. Hey, you don't, you don't bring Sesame Street into this. You don't need to bring well, Sesame Street into this. I just did. I went there. Good morning, gentlemen. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. My question is for Sammy Callahan. Uh, Sammy, when we last spoke, it was in the lead-up to Barbed Wire Massacre. Um, now that the match has aired, what has the feedback been like, and specifically in terms of airing it on Twitch as opposed to traditional television? Uh, I think it was something that uh, it definitely launched the Twi- Twitch platform. And uh, the only thing, you can't always make all the fans happy. It sure, there was an amazing sense of achievement of what we had accomplished and uh, the buzz we got from, but there's still people that weren't happy. They weren't happy. There wasn't enough blood. There wasn't enough this. There wasn't enough that. I'm just saying we got pretty violent, but today's day and age, a lot of times you can't do blood. That's out of our hands. That's out of the company's hands. That determines the network. This was originally supposed to air on national television. That's why we didn't believe in it. And then last minute we decided to put it on Twitch so we can show the whole match. But even without blood, I think the picture that we we told was something absolutely amazing. Sammy, you have a question from Lee Mead at a live radio. Uh, How do you feel you you make your your debut uh, at the biggest impact event of the year, Bound for Glory? Was that any more pressure on you? Uh, And how did you think it uh, came out? I absolutely love the pressure. I loved everything I've done since uh, I came to Impact. Uh, me coming to Impact not only uh, sparked interest for me, I feel like it sparked stuff for Impact as well. I think it's a very good relationship mutually because we're both benefiting from it. And uh, this is just the start of things for me uh, in Impact. I'm not going to lie. This year, my focus is on one thing, and that's become the Impact World Heavyweight Champion. Going in your action, he wants to be the uh, world champion. Uh, you know, he's got what it takes to be the world champion, and you know, pressure makes diamonds. So, you know, it's just how you how you how you deal with pressure, and um, that's just you know, some that's part of the game. You know, uh, he uh, I think Sammy, I will say this for him, he's done a great job of um, branding himself, of going to New Japan, of you know, going to Lucha Underground, of going to Impact of making sure he stays relevant. And so, like I said, we've got our eyes on them, and sooner or later we're going to hook up again and we're going to make it much more memorable than the first time. (laughs) 
Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com here. Sammy, you've worked a little bit of everywhere, or at least been seen on TV a little bit of everywhere over the last year. How was that different from a couple of years ago? Because it didn't seem like that was an option for for virtually anybody a few years ago, let alone uh, the, the number of wrestlers that are doing it now. Well, wrestling's changing right now. Uh, the time and age of the territories of people working against each other is is at its all-time end. Like, it's not going to happen anymore. Wrestling has to change. I think Impact finally realizes that. I think the wrestling world is starting to realize that. WWE, like it or not, has a monopoly on wrestling, and they might always have. But there can be a true alternative if everyone else works together. It just shows the amount of wrestling fans there are in the world. Last year for WrestleMania weekend, there was 200,000 people in Orlando but only, what, 80,000 went to WrestleMania? So there was an equal amount of people, if not more, there just to do all the other events, the conventions, watch all the other shows. So it's a really cool time to be a professional wrestler. And me, personally, being able to show up everywhere, I think it kind of helps my character. It helps my gimmick to the fact that I am the worldwide desperado. You never know where I'm going to show up. I'm blazing trails and being a cowboy and that's what I'm always going to be. And right now, where I am in my life, being able to wrestle for Impact, Lucha Underground, sometimes New Japan, you never know where I'm going to show up, and I always like to have that allure about me. And Conan, you've had your hands dipped in, in several promotions as well. Like, What do you think about, about the changes that have been made <clears throat> in that regard? Bro, I've been advocating that people should be working together for years. It's been, you know, I've always been a guy that's tried to, break the exploitation and the monopoly that there is in wrestling. And it's just, you know, like, for example, I remember one time when I was working for Crash, we did this thing with the Hardy Boys. And just because the referee, uh, I think it was maybe Marty Elias, had shown up on Crash uh, and, and they showed that match on, on Impact, they sent them a cease and desist letter. And so we actually digitalized the referee's face, and it was that petty. It's like, really, dude, that's what you're, you're, you're getting mad about? We should all be fighting. We should all be uniting because at the end of the day, we're all fighting for breadcrumbs, you know, and if, um, and if we all get together, we can make a big pie, you know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that finally Impact is working with AAA and, and uh, everybody's starting to kind of work together because, like, you know, now the power's in the wrestler's hands and people like, you know, Sammy and, and uh, the Young Bucks and Joey Ryan and, you know, Ricochet before he went to WWE were clear examples of that. You can make, you know, Matt Riddle, you can make really good, the Lucha Brothers, you can make really good money, you know. Uh, and so now the power's gone back to the wrestler, and I think promotions have recognized that unless they start, you know, uh, being more just and fair in the way that they work with talent, that talent isn't going to want to work with them. Thank you, guys. We have a uh, follow-up question from Simon in the U.K. He wanted to know, based on your comment earlier, uh, Sammy first and then Conan, who is your favorite Sesame Street character? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going with the Cookie Monster all day, every day. All day, every day. That's what's happening. Cookie Monster. 1,000%. 1,000%, bro. Huh? At least we can agree on something. Yes, that might be the only one. Hey guys, Ryan Bowman from the Gorilla Position dot com. Uh, Conan, you produced a lot of music in the past, and when I saw that you were going to be on the call, I just got curious: Are you still uh, dabbling in some music, or is wrestling pretty much taking up all your time? Yeah, I, I'm I'm doing so many things right now. Obviously, there's a there's a part of me that would like to go back to that, and maybe in Era Lucha, I might do some stuff for uh for some um you know wrestlers entrance music. But, um, you know, my mind is is really focused on a couple of things. Impact, you know, uh, Era Lucha, you know, uh, Rey Mysterio, and myself uh, getting back in shape and doing my, my, um, my farewell tour. So it doesn't leave much time for music, but it's not out of the question. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, this is Vijay from Sports Kida again. Uh, my question is to Conan. Uh, so around 20 years ago, we saw you join the NWO. Do you have any memories of the event? Um, you know, the only thing that I remember is that they were the hottest thing in wrestling. And I was very honored that they picked me to, to be in there. The only thing is, is that at that time, you know, the NWO 
basically was so big that they actually had an A team, a B team, and a C team. So I wasn't really part of the NWO when it was at its zenith, but um, I was with the Wolfpack, you know, and uh, at that time that was a big honor for me because, you know, you had Nash, Macho Man, Sting, and Luger who were all bigger stars than me, and so I got a big rub off of that, and it really helped catapult my career. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com again. Uh, Sammy, I know that you've uh, been on a couple of cards with Brian Pillman Jr., who has just kind of started his wrestling journey. Do you have any impressions of him early on and, and what you think of him? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pillman Jr. has started training with me, Dave and Jake, at the OIK4K wrestling, wrestling Academy in Dayton, Ohio, which has opened up. We have like 23 students right now, but uh, he'd already been training for a little bit at OVW, uh, and he wanted to just uh, train under some new people, learn some new things, and we've kind of taken him under our wing now for the last couple of weeks, and uh, he's hungry, he has a great look, he's, he's going to be a big star, like it or not, no matter what. So I'd rather him jump on our bandwagon and be part of our team where we can get him and uh, really help him and gear him towards the right direction. Man, Conan, any thoughts of that? Have you, have you seen any of uh, Pillman Jr. yet? No, I have not. I met him when he – I actually went to the Brian Pillman Memorial, so he was like a little kid at that time. Um, yeah, I haven't seen nothing of him, and I hope that, you know, uh, he pick, p- picked up a lot of his dad's characteristics because his dad was one of my favorite realest guys that ever existed in this business. And I, and I, and I give a little shout-out to Sammy and his crew because they're – they're starting to produce a lot of talent out there. I've actually used a couple of their boys, and, and uh, they're well-trained. Like, I used Trey Miguel. Um, who's a that I used from, from, from your camp, uh, Sammy? Uh, what was the question again? I'm sorry, you kind of broke up at the end. I, I was actually putting you over, which will be the last time during this call, which was I was saying that you have a school and you've been putting out some really good prospects because he was asking me about Brian Pillman Jr., and I used Trey Miguel, and there's another guy I used from that you guys trained that was very good, too. I mean, you guys are starting to really produce some good, uh, you know, uh, talent down there. Absolutely. Uh, we brought Trey Miguel into the world, and uh, now he's working for Arrow Lucha, and he's going to start blowing up even more this year. We have Zachary Wentz and Desmond Xavier. Desmond Xavier already wrestling for Impact Wrestling, big star there. Uh, they're over at Dragon Gate right now, absolutely killing it together. Uh, now we have Brian Pillman Jr. We have a lot of really good young guys coming through our system. Uh, we're trying to build our own territory in the Midwest. Uh, we're trying to build our own thing and say where the Midwest is where it's at in America right now. We just had uh, MJF and Ace Romero, who are two great young guys, moved to our area to come under our wing and uh, start working for all of our promotions. And uh, this is just the start of things. We're going to have more and more and more and more people uh, move in. We just got uh, – a wrestler that just moved here from Syria that wanted to start training uh, that speaks Arabic and a couple other languages that he has a ton of potential. Uh, the sky's the limit for our school right now, and I think in the next couple of years, like our guys are going to be the guys uh, getting booked everywhere. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hi, Sammy. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com again. Um, I went, we, we had you on our podcast a couple of months ago, and we, we talked about this a little bit, but I, I kind of wanted to get uh, your thoughts on just how different it is working with Impact in, in terms of uh, your promos and, and working a match as opposed to your time when you were with NXT. Uh, one thing I'll say about Impact is, and it's something I absolutely love, is the atmosphere. Everything's laid back. It's not something that – they don't try to be something that they're not. Like, we, we go in, we have a good time. And we kill it, we do work, and we go on to the next day, and that's how we film television. And Impact is the first company that's kind of pulled the reins off me and been like, you know what, do and say whatever you want to do. And then when I go a little too far, believe me, I hear it when I come to the back, but I'm at a point in my career right now I'd rather say sorry than ask for permission because that's the kind of person I am, and Impact is giving me, Dave and Jake, all the OVE guys a true chance to show exactly what we bring to the table. And is the caller still there? No. No, he, he's not. Uh, did you want to add in there? Yeah, I just wanted to elaborate that. You know, I was there obviously in 2005, and that wasn't the case. And um, it is laid back. There's a new regime. They are. Hello? Go ahead, Conan. Yeah. 
Uh, there are new people in charge. And what I like about the, the atmosphere in the dressing room is basically we know that people like to throw shade. We know that a lot of mistakes were made in the past. We know that a lot of them were self-inflicted. But I think w we've looked around and we're like, yo, we're the team uh, that is going to take this to the next level that's going to eradicate, you know, all the, you know, all the bad pub that we've had in the past. And we've got a good roster right now to do it with and people that are going to be coming in the future. So I really think you're going to be seeing a lot of good things coming out of impact, mainly because of the talent, because I've always said, as long as you have great talent, you don't have to be booking smoke and mirrors because of wrestlers limitations. We got a real good crew that can go in the, in the ring. Hey, this, uh, this is Darren Simmons from ImpactAsylum.net again. This question is actually for both Sammy and Conan. Uh, you all have had a great feud with the OVE, LAX, you know, Climax, the Barbed Wire Massacre, but uh, wondering what kind of your thoughts of that feud possibly transitioning over to the knockouts area. Conan, of course, you mentioned before Diamante, who's coming back from injury. And Sammy, you have a certain uh, death machine, a Havoc death machine that – um, on the female side that could possibly show up. What are you all's thoughts of having having the few transition to the knockout division with a with a uh, LAX and a OVE representative? I would absolutely love to have uh, Jessica Havoc, my uh, my other half. There, uh, she's one of the best women's wrestlers in the world right now, and she she was an Impact before. She's a former Knockouts champion, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll see her back at Impact killing it alongside the rest of us killers because uh, that's where she needs to be. That's where she wants to be. So hopefully here in the future we see her come and be dominant like she was her first run there. Yeah, you know, Diamante, we haven't seen anything she's been able to do because she got hurt very early on in in. in and if you, if you don't mind me interrupting you, yeah. Diamante is freaking fire. She the, the Impact fans have no clue what that girl can do. Yeah, she's a little stick of dynamite, and, you know, she's under that, that you know, uh, LAX learning tree, you know, which is low-key, homicide, myself, you know, Santana, Ortiz. She's pumped. She's she's ready to show, you know, she's ready to earn her stripes and show that she ain't just there to be flipping up, you know, gang signs and shit. And so she's ready to go, man. She is ready to prove a point, so I can't wait to see her go in and mix it up with her Havoc, Taya, or anybody else. Thank you both. Thank you. Hey guys, Ryan Bowman from the gorilla com. I guess I can throw this out to both of you. The barbed wire massacre uh, match got such an internet buzz. When that goes down, do you guys think about that afterwards? You go, man, the internet's really going to be talking about it. Or is it just something that kind of happens organically? Absolutely. I always want to be the guy, no matter what, at the end of the tapings, I want to be the guy that everyone's talking about. And, uh, since I've showed up at uh, Impact, I, me and my OBE boys, along with LAX, when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of things, we're the thing that people's talking about because we're always going to go out there with everything we have, and we're going to hell or high water try to have the best match on any event or any TV taping where we're going to be a part of. Now, when you're when your prevalent mindset, which is the mindset that we all have, and by that I mean OBE and us because they have a, a similar mindset, is we're there to steal the show, bro. And that's all there is to it. So when you have, you know, four to six guys on that same thing, let's steal the show together and, uh, you know, great things can happen. Of course, you want to make sure that whatever you do is generating a buzz. If not, why even do it? You know, so this is, this is some, you know, this is something that obviously you, you go and you look at what your numbers are on Twitch, what your numbers are as far as like people watching your videos on YouTube. And that kind of gives you a barometer of um, how popular what you're doing, if it's getting over or not. And if it isn't, then you need to change something. So I think we're always all on our top of our games as far as that. All righty, Conan, Sammy Callan, I appreciate it very much. We're going to wrap it up with that question. Uh, Conan, let's go to you for, first for the uh, a final thought. Well, the final thought is, you know, uh, 
Uh, you know, one thing that everybody knows about me, it doesn't matter what promotion I'm in. If at the time I'm not happy, I'm going to tell you I'm not. And that's always got me uh, uh, heat. I'm very happy with what I'm doing right now in uh, an impact because much like Sammy, we have a lot of uh, uh, creative liberties. Obviously, you know, like him, we have to be pulled back a lot of times because there's stuff that can't be shown on TV, you know. And uh, so I can't wait to see what ideas impact's going to come up with what ideas we're going to come up with and uh i know that i know that soon we're going to be meeting ov again and i can guarantee you it's going to be more memorable than the first time sammy what's the final thought on your end uh i pretty much say the same thing uh i'm a busy guy i'm traveling all over the world and wrestling for almost every major company on the planet uh, I'm running my own shows with the Wrestling Revolver and uh, doing all the nuts and bolts of that. But the chance to be at Impact and truly make a difference where we're going through a big change in Impact. Things are changing, but they're changing for the better. TNA is about to get to back to where it needs to be, and that's focusing on wrestling and having some of the best wrestling action in the world. And I think within the next month, Impact Wrestling, along with myself, the rest of OVE and LAX, uh, we're going to be cornerstones and show people exactly why Impact is one of the places to be, along with the incoming Brian Cage, who's debuting tonight, and a lot of other people on their way in, people on their way out. Things are changing for the better, and uh, if, if you're doubting it, if you're truly doubting it, I'm telling you, turn into night to Impact Wrestling live on top and watch me and Bobby Lashley have an absolute barn burner in a match that no one is going to expect. All righty, Conan, Sammy Callahan, thank you both very much. Media, I did want to alert you, next week we're going to be going Wednesday for the teleconference at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, again, next Wednesday, 2 p.m., and I'm happy to announce it will be with Jimmy Jacobs. So next can Wednesday, I say 2 one p.m. Last, can I say one last thing to everybody that's still on here from the media? Please help me in uh, um, getting Hijo the Fantasma. You can find him on Twitter at Hijo del Fantasma, getting him to be a part of Team India, okay? And that's number one. And number two, you can find Disco Inferno at Glenn Gilberti. Please tell him not to renege on our Super Bowl bet, which he lost, which means he has to wear a dress under Chris Jericho Cruz. Boom. All right. Anything else from you, uh, Sammy? I'm not sure how you follow uh, those two. Uh... I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure I covered everything. I got it in. All right. Uh, so, all right. All right. Conan, Sammy, thank you both very much. Media, we'll talk to you next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Be cool. Thank you, Ross. Thank you guys for calling in.